Welcome to another video. A little bit different perspective this time. <laughs> for a good reason. For a big reason. Time has finally come to do a review of the 12 inch Dobsonian. Now, it's been a year since I've had this really nice telescope. In my view, the best telescope I could ever have. And it goes by many names. GSO, Apertura, Stella Lyra, Zumel. Whatever you do, make sure to get the deluxe version because it has some pretty nice accessories compared to the basic version. Now if you do want to buy this one, you can find the link below from the USA, I recommend High Point Scientific, the Apertura, anywhere else in the world, GSO is fine, Stella Lira is fine, they are all the same telescope just under different brands. What we will do in this video, I will also show you what you can actually see, Jupiter, Mars, the Moon, the Sun unfortunately not because I don't have the filter yet. But other than that, everything else. I also did an unboxing of this telescope a year ago, so you might want to check it out if you are considering buying one and you want to see exactly what's in the box. Now the first thing an experienced astronomer will ask you, how heavy is this thing? <laughs> Whoa, this is heavy. There's that word again, heavy. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? What? Is it heavy? Well, let's have a look. When you do install some straps, it becomes really no issue at all to carry around the OTA. I have zero problems, as you can see here, carrying it. Yeah, go for it. The base itself has a really nice handle. You can pick it up and carry it at any given time. It has 13 kilograms. The OTA itself has 20 kilograms. For those of you that are in the USA, just double it by two and you will get the weight in pounds so about 40 pounds and the base like 26 pounds something like that i also recommend adding some wheels to the base again if you check my previous video when i did the unboxing i walk you through the process of how to add some wheels and in that case it's just uh, no issue whatsoever transporting this telescope anywhere you want and you can also drive your kids with it <laughs> Now people will tell you, this telescope needs dark skies, not really true, you can enjoy this, this one even outside in my Bortle 5, 6 area, you can observe the moon, the planets with great resolution, but when you do want to take it out of the city, it fits with no problem whatsoever in my Hyundai E30, which is by no means a big car, just have a look. Keep in mind one important thing though, when you do use it, you will probably need to be standing in order to look through the focuser, especially if you use it with an EQ platform. Now the price, the price comes around $1,000, $1,200, depends where you get it or if you get it second hand. But keep in mind, here we are talking about an F5 telescope, so you will need a lot of better eyepieces to make it work compared to the smaller 8-inch version, which is F6. With this one, I don't really recommend going for all the budget eyepieces that I recommended in the past. It's a lot better to go with something like $100 per eyepiece on AliExpress and you should be fine. You will find a lot of recommendations here on this channel. Just check my history. I'm also preparing a really nice video which you guys wanted me to do. The Angel Eyes 82 degrees eyepieces. I've been very happy with them. I'm still waiting for the 16 millimeter once it comes. I'll be making a video about that one. Now I want to make things very clear. If you're a beginner, if you're thinking about your first telescope, please <laughs> don't buy a 12 inch. It's huge. And if you don't know if you want to take it seriously inside this scoby, it's going to cost you a lot of money and it's going to be some expensive learning. If you are a complete beginner, please check my review of the 8 inch. Just make sure to get it from GSO, Apertura or Zumel because of the better accessories and you will be much better off to start with that one and a later upgrade, just like me, a couple of years down the road. Now, if you do already own a telescope and you want to take this seriously, yeah, rest assured, this is as serious as it gets. As they say, serious as a heart attack. <laughs> this one is a telescope that will easily stay with you your entire life. You will be able to see thousands and thousands of deep sky objects with no issue whatsoever. The Messier catalog that you see here, it will be very easy to see all of them. Most of them will be quite spectacular across the entire field, especially with 82 degrees eyepieces. 
let me tell you, looking at M13, 200, 300 magnification, going through the entire 82 degrees field, it's really, really nice. Now that we have covered some of the basics, before we go into the technicalities of uh, the focuser and stuff like that, let's have a look at what you can actually see with your own eyes with this telescope. First up is Saturn. For nights of excellent seeing, I can get magnification all up to 600 and it's really looking spectacular, just like you see in this video. To be honest, in reality, it was even a little bit better. Saturn really starts to show a lot of detail and for the first time in this telescope, I really had the feeling that I'm looking at a real planet, not just some small pebble in the distance. Jupiter in this telescope near position is just absolutely amazing. You can easily spend half an hour looking at all kinds of details as well as its moons passing over like in this shot. This is an actual shadow of one of its moons. Mars does not come in your position often, but when it does, again, no problem whatsoever seeing the polar sections. You can see again some details if you spend some time on it. I was really happy with the planetary performance of this telescope. Now, even though this one excels in deep sky observation, most people do not realize that the big aperture also means increased resolution. So even looking at the moon, it's going to provide you pristine, very, very sharp images. When I upgraded from 8 inch to this one, it was like upgrading my television from Full HD to 4K. It's really, looking at the moon, it's like a 4K image. I really enjoy looking at the moon. In theory, with this one, you can resolve objects as low as 700 meters. That's really, really small. The other day, for example, I was hunting for Rima Hadley. It's one of the small ditches on the moon, which was the object of the mission for Apollo 15. Right in one of the next videos, I'll be showing you how I managed to capture it and in a way prove that really we did Apollo 15. Now, observing the sun is also very, very possible. All you have to do is install some Bader solar filter in front of the aperture. Unfortunately, Bader Planetarium has not produced yet the big sheet. Bader, if one of you is watching this video, come on guys, I've been waiting for a year for this sheet. <laughs> Produce it so I can buy it, so I can finally capture the sun with a full 12 inch aperture, even if the seeing does not allow it most of the time. Which brings me to another topic. People will tell you, ha, ah, it's too big, the sink will not allow it. Yes, most of the time the sink will not allow it. But let me tell you, on those few nights of the year when the sink does allow me to use the full aperture, it's an unforgettable experience. As I mentioned, there is nothing quite like this one, except for a 16-inch telescope. <laughs> nothing like this one at this price category for $1,000-$1,200, uh, which will provide such nice views of deep sky objects. In the winter, looking at the Orion Nebula with all the small details, in F5, really wide views in my uh, perfect sky rover eyepiece, was really, really nice. Also, the Swan Nebula was uh, quite uh, nice. Lots of detail there. The global clusters, they are a story in itself. Even open clusters, like the Perseus double cluster. Keep in mind that this one goes all the way up to magnitude 15 stars. This means you're seeing a lot, a lot, a lot of stars which are simply invisible in a smaller telescope. So wherever you look, you're just seeing a sea of stars. It actually shows 300% more stars than my previous 8-inch uh, telescope, which is quite a big jump of number of stars across the entire field. And it makes a difference, it makes a big difference. Galaxies also under a Bortle 3 4 sky come into life. It was the first time that we saw a little bit of the dust lanes in M51, which was my one of my wishes to see the dust lanes of a galaxy. And finally, with my own telescope, <laughs> I made it happen. Now that you have a very good idea of what this telescope can do, what you can actually see with it, what it costs, <laughs> Let's have a look at why I really like the GSO version with all its really, really nice details. They make a huge difference in the end as to how comfortable and how effective your observation will be. 
first things first, the mirror, it's a typical high quality parabolic mirror with the center marking, making collimation very easy. These days, everybody has it. First thing I really love about this telescope is the high quality focuser, a precise, no slope, double speed focuser. The double speed means I can fine tune the focus, especially useful for, for high power observation and imaging. The adapters are of the ring type, making collimation more precise and the eyepieces fit a lot nicer. It also has a 2 inch extender, but I have not had to use it yet. Well, I use it for my camera because it can't reach focus. Another thing I really love, it uses lazy Susan turntable for easy turning. You can really hear it click, especially at this size, it's really really nice. At the bottom of the mirror, on the other side, we find a fan powered by 8 AA batteries. I recommend rechargeable batteries. This is for those nights where you might want to get the mirror to acclimatize as soon as possible. So make that fan running. When you look close at the mounting position, you will find out that you can move the balance of this telescope, which is really, really nice, depending on the type of equipment that you will put on it. You can move it up or down and achieve perfect balance. Now in terms of equipment, it comes with a 30mm GSL SuperView. I already did a review in another video, so you, want, you might want to check it out. 9mm plus all, I already sold both of these eyepieces because I upgraded, but you will get them in the package when you buy this one. It also comes with a straight view optical finder. If you've been following my channel, you know I'm not a fan of optical finders. You will not find it on this telescope, it's removed, it's in the box down in the cellar. My recommendation as always is red dot finder in combination with a laser. You can check my video where I go into a detail on which one to buy and how to properly use it to find objects. At the top you have a really nice plastic cover. It also has a hole in case you want to make a small aperture filter, for example for looking at the sun. Honestly, I wouldn't lug this huge telescope just so I can use how much? Three inches of aperture. Thank you, but no thank you. Now, because it can easily go to 600 magnification on a night of good seeing, the objects will very quickly disappear from the view. That's why I really recommend building an EQ platform. It's a really, really nice thing to have. I already have the guide on my channel. You might want to check it out. As I mentioned, it's an f5 telescope. This means the focal ratio is 1520 millimeters, 150 centimeters. And of course, the aperture 12 inches, it means 304 millimeter. It's a really nice aperture, really nice focal length. So what other equipment you should buy? It's simple. Just check the last of my few videos where I went to the pain and trouble of upgrading my entire collection of eyepieces from the 8 inch to the 12 inch. There are some other small upgrades I can recommend. Just make sure to put a little bit of rubbers here at this position so that the OTA doesn't bump into the wood. And that's all there is to it really. I highly recommend this telescope. If you are not a complete beginner, you will really, really have a very good time observing with it. If you want to know exactly what objects look like with a lot of nice sketches, with a lot of nice targets, I highly recommend this uh, book that I just bought, the second edition of the Atlas of Messier Objects. We'll find the link below in my recommended uh, book of uh, equipment. <laughs> and see you next time. Over and out, hoping for some clear skies finally.